Hello, my name is Chloe Liebengood and I am a member of Free Methodist. I started attending this church about 10 months ago after I graduated from Westmont College. This Wednesday, I'm going to read for you Psalm 27. And as I read, I would like for us to consider what it means to dwell in the house of the Lord, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. But first, a couple of notes before I read the psalm. Let's situate this psalm in its proper context. Psalm 27 is a psalm of David. And while we do not know exactly what was happening in David's life at the time of his writing this, we can see from the psalm itself that David was facing some fearsome enemies. Yet he also had reason to praise and trust God for God's strong and faithful care of him. The psalm is both a psalm of lament and petition, as well as one of trust and gratitude. So let's read Psalm 27. I invite you to follow along in your Bibles or simply close your eyes, listen, and let the word of God descend upon you. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an enemy besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So while there is so much to be considered and meditated upon in the psalm, I would like for us to focus on verse 4. As a child, I grew up reciting an orienting prayer, which contained the words of verse 4. Perhaps because I grew accustomed to praying these words each Sunday, reciting them as other words I had memorized in childhood, like the Pledge of Allegiance or the words to my school fight song, I never really considered what they might mean until I was older. In fact, I never even realized these words were scripture. But in my young adulthood, as I moved away from my childhood church, which prayed these words each and every Sunday, I began to pray them by myself. And in doing so, I began to consider what I was actually praying for and asking of the Lord. Upon first reading the psalm, verse 4 stands out among the rest. It doesn't seem to fit with David's petitions for protection and mercy or his confidence in the Lord's salvation. However, upon further examination, I believe this verse anchors the psalm, highlighting David's and our ultimate desire to be with God. There are three main parts or actions of verse 4 which I would like for us to examine. First, David asked to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What does it mean to dwell? I often thought of dwelling as a passive verb. But as I've grown older, I've learned that dwelling requires a certain amount of responsibility and work. To dwell is to live and breathe and move in a specific place. It is to tend and steward and protect the things of that place. 
Dwelling is hunkering down, devoting time and energy to the place, its people, and its belongings. Just look at how Eugene Peterson translates John 1, 14, which traditionally reads, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Peterson says, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Dwelling is a profoundly active verb. Thus dwelling in the house of the Lord does not mean sitting around in some marble structure surrounded by golden clouds, lazily humming along with the harp playing angel, <laughs> the picture I had in mind for much of my childhood. Rather, dwelling in the house of the Lord means getting down into the nitty gritty of the kingdom of God. It means taking seriously our call to steward the earth and its resources. It means devoting ourselves to one another in love and service so that the kingdom of God might be furthered on earth. That God's dwelling place, his house, might be extended beyond the walls of our churches, our communities, and our hearts. Certainly, God can take care of the earth and extend his kingdom without us. In fact, we cannot do so without the presence of God in us. And yet, God still invites us into this work. Not only does he invite us, he created us to desire him and his kingdom. He made us to seek him, just as David asks one thing from the Lord, that he may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. Second, David asks to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. Gazing again is an active verb. It is defined as to look steadily and intently, especially in admiration, surprise, or thought. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord is to immerse yourself in the presence of God and allow yourself to be transformed by the sheer wonder of who God is. We were made beautifully and placed in a beautiful world to both seek and create beauty. And we were made by a beautiful God who is making all things beautiful once again. Though the destruction of hideousness of sin ravages our world. Hence, the beauty of God can be found in many places. For God is the creator and source of all beauty. I often find the beauty of the Lord in nature, whether it be the utter magnitude of El Capitan in Yosemite or a quiet stream in the hills of Santa Barbara. There I am able to quiet the noisy voices of this world and the nagging of my heart, to gaze upon God's beautiful creation and allow the ugliest parts of myself to be transformed by his beautiful presence. For in gazing upon the beauty of the Lord, we too may become beautiful. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord is to be in awe and wonder of all that he is. Sovereign, just, kind, loving, gracious, merciful, beautiful. It is to allow our hardest parts to be softened and transformed to be more like our beautiful God. Third, David asks to seek God in his temple. Once again, we have an active verb, to seek. To seek is to orient oneself to God and to all that he is. Seeking is an active practice that requires putting first that which you are aiming for and setting aside that which distracts and directs you away from God. Seeking God means dying to our sinful desires, the so-called desires of the flesh in Galatians 5, which produce barriers, destruction, and ugliness. Seeking God means turning away from these desires and pursuing the fruit of the Spirit, which produces in us and in our communities wholeness and beauty. To seek God is to desire for, long for, and follow after his presence in order that we may be, that we may be made more like him. David was seeking to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, to gaze upon his beauty, and to seek him in his temple. These profoundly active verbs require us to set aside our own agendas and worldly desires and to make our home, our very life and our very being in the presence of God. Just as David asked for these things, we too must ask God, for we know that without him and the Spirit's gentle yet powerful work in our lives, we would succumb to the desires of the flesh and ignore our calling to be with God and be transformed by God. I pray that these words of Psalm 27 would compel us to likewise seek the Lord and dwell in his goodness and his beauty.
In doing so, may we be made more beautiful like our wondrous God. For we may remain confident in this. We will see the goodness of the Lord, the beauty of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. This has been Wednesday Word with the Free Methodist Church of Santa Barbara. We hope that you will join us for worship this week. For information about our service times, visit fmcsb.org.